Today is March 29th. It is the fourth day of the feast. And it is the third day in the count of Pentecost. And we left off talking about spiritual Jews, how this relates to the body of Christ, Yeshua's people. Since his first coming, everything, the blessings of the tribe of Judah, were transferred to the people of Yeshua, the church, the law, and the scepter, the rulership. And this is all in possession of God's people who keep his commandments and have the testimony of Yeshua. They're tied to the vine. They've washed their garments in the blood of Christ. It's a prophecy about Christ's first coming and then onward all the way up to his second coming with power and great glory. And God's Spirit, God's Jehovah's Holy Spirit works in those who obey his commandments and keep his testimonies, and statutes, and judgments. And we see in Revelation chapter 11 starting in verse 1, and there was given me a reed like to a rod and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given to the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. If any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. If any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Now, measuring the temple mentioned how God's people we are the temple and we are to be part of new jerusalem at the coming of christ if we are in him and he is in us we are to be part of that new temple with a rejuvenated restored everlasting spiritual body Now, the last 2,000 years, the church, the body of Christ, are those who have his commandments, the commandments of God, and have in possession the testimony of Yeshua. And this is what brings about the kingdom in God's good time. This is the beginning of the kingdom. Just the beginning. Now, as we just read, it says these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. God defines candlesticks or lampstands right in chapter 1 
right in chapter 1. Everything is established by two or three witnesses. Here we see two witnesses, two candlesticks, two lampstands. And the mystery of, is found right in Yeshua's words. Verse 17, Revelation chapter 1. Let's just start in start in verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Yeshua the Christ, was in the Isle of Pat called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Now this day here, the day of the Lord. The coming day. This is a vision about what is to come. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what you see write in a book, and send it to the seven churches, which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the middle of the seven candlesticks, one like to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the breasts with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, and white as snow, and his eyes were as the flame of fire, and his feet like to fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shining in his full strength when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand on me saying to me fear not I am the first and the last I am he that lives and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of the grave and death. Write these things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches. So, right there, we must understand about God's witnesses. They are part of his spiritual body. It's not about two people that come. It's about God's people, his spiritual body of Christ. Christ is the head of that body. Now, the worldwide church of God, they had no idea or under, true understanding of this. They couldn't at the very beginning. Because it would take a generation for this body, a generation for the body of Christ to grow up in this end time, grow, to come to a maturity 
And in coming to that maturity, there would be trial. Trial and tribulation of a spiritual nature. War against them. That war has to do with lies breaking the commandments of God and who will conquer and go through that by following the commandments of God and understanding Daniel chapter 9 70 weeks are determined on your people and on your holy city to finish transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Seventy weeks. Seventy sets of seven. The New International Version says 77s are decreed for your people in your holy city. The New Living Translation says 70 sets of seven have been decreed. See, this all having to do with the Feast of Weeks and Pentecost. In this last generation, When we look at the Hebrew, the word for weeks here is Shabua. Strong's Concordance 7620. A period of seven. Heptad, week. literal seven, i.e. a week. So this period of the Feast of Weeks, there would be 70 of these in the last generation. And there would be trial and testing during this time. to produce the spiritual body of Christ, to resurrect the spiritual body of Christ. And the physical body, the dead body, is done away with. There are many physical dead bodies out there. Churches who are lying who are breaking the commandments of God. When you see that, you must flee from that. That is abomination in the holy place. You must understand what is coming at the end of this 70-year period, which we are quickly coming to now. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. Who are the wise? The wise, the fear of the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom. And they have good understanding who keep his commandments. has to do with repentance, with keeping the law of God, his appointed times, his Sabbaths, and understanding these prophecies. You cannot understand any prophecy in the book of Revelation or any of the prophetic books without God's Spirit. You cannot figure it out. It's not made to be figured out by just having 
earthly carnal intelligence. You must keep the commandments of God in order to understand these things. It is that simple. People have been deceived. They haven't understood. There's been false teachers, false false prophets, false teachers that lead people astray this entire 70 years. Without God's law, you cannot understand any of it. It all becomes physical, about physical things. Carnal, the carnal mind cannot understand the things about God that he gives in his word. You have to be subject to the law and come under his authority, come under his law and obey him in his commandments and statutes and judgments in order to understand anything he's giving in prophecy. The wicked will not understand. Sinners and transgressors will be destroyed together. We're all, we've all had sin, we were all in, you know, we're trying to come out of sin. That's what this, this is all about. That's what Christ does for us. We have forgiveness of sins. Not to continue in sin and darkness, but to have light. we get to Revelation chapter 11, we must understand the temple of God. This has been going on in God's people since Christ's first coming, since the very day of Pentecost, when Jehovah gave the people of Yeshua, His Holy Spirit, a portion of His Holy Spirit to live in the Spirit and in truth. So this Revelation chapter 11 goes all the way back to that time. That's where it starts. That's the beginning of it. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks, or lampstands, standing before the God of the earth. So it's the witnesses, the spiritual body of Christ. From the very beginning, from Pentecost, 2,000 years ago. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns on his head. His tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it was born. Speaking of Yeshua the Messiah. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Where she is, has a place prepared of God. That they should feed her a thousand two hundred and three score days. This is a period of twelve hundred and sixty years that the early church from Pentecost 2,000 years ago 
would have the truth, would be strong and pow and power do powerful things by God's Spirit. When it talks about revelation, and we've gone over this in the past, when it talks about fire proceeding out of their mouth. It's not literal fire that they breathe fire, like a cartoon dragon. Okay? Everything needs to... All of this is discerned in God's Word. Here a little, there a little. Everything about fire. It's the Word of God. They speak the Word of God. The Word of God is a two-edged sword. It can make you alive and it can kill you. You have to understand that. If someone speaks to you the Word of God, which I am doing today, you are automatically, your, your decision on life is in your hands then. You can follow God, which will lead to life, or you can shrug it off and die. That's what's being said here. That's what's being said here. That's the, that's the witnesses of God. God's people who speak fire out of their mouth. God says in the book of Jeremiah, is not my word fire like the hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? And people are, if any man will hurt them, they must in this manner be killed. Oh, that's what it is. The Word of God, it can kill, it can make alive. It depends on the decision people make in their own life when they hear these things. I've set before you this day life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. Jehovah doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their way and repent and live. They have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. They have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with as many plagues as often as they will. All these things are spiritual. The rain that comes from God, the water, the refreshing, it's in their power. It's in our power if we are following God, if you understand, if we're speaking his word faithfully. We have the living waters bubbling up inside us if we speak his word faithfully. And to turn other waters to blood those that aren't speaking his word faithfully. And we see, we can see we have power to do that too. For those who understand. Because the false teachers in this time have all become like babbling fools. That they truly are. And there is no hiding for them in the end. They don't understand. They keep laughing and smirking, and they don't understand what time it is. They just don't, but they will soon. They will soon, because God is going to bring this all to an end soon. And where will they stand? Where will they stand when they've been told the truth and won't repent and continue to steal and lie? Liars in the temple of God, buying and selling you. Well, plagues have come on them by the word of God. Plagues have come on them, and we'll get there. We'll get there by the end of this Bible study. Revelation chapter 12. Twelve hundred and sixty days. 1,203 score years. 
the early church. That time came already, but now we're in the latter reign. The latter reign. There's the former reign and the latter reign that comes from heaven. And it will take a generation to come to where we are now. A generation. Seventy years. Seventy sets of seven. That's the first part of the early church. Mark chapter 4. Verse 21, and he said to them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? But there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither is there anything kept secret that it should not come abroad. If any man have ear, let him hear. He said to them, Take heed what you hear, and with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And to you that hear shall be more given. For he that has, to him shall be given. And he that has not, from him shall be taken even that which he has. So what do we see? What have we talked about since the beginning of this feast? The true Passover. The true, Pente the true count to Pentecost. The, the Feast of Weeks. How that attaches to Christ. It has to do with the first fruits in the kingdom. The spiritual body of Christ that is resurrected at his coming. Those that have gone before for 2,000 years and died in Christ. And those that are born in this last generation. That come into this. And are tried and tested. And that will be part of that number as well at his coming as a witness of this last generation but this would take a generation we see that worldwide church of God under Herbert W. Armstrong you know started he started on the radio around 1934 90 years ago 90 years ago. But it is interesting. He started this church, started preaching on the radio. But this church would go through many trials, and there would come what would come out of that in the end is what is important. The physical organization would be desolate. But God's spiritual body prevails. In 1946, Herbert W. Armstrong incorporated the church. 1946. Forty years later, he died to the year. 1986 he died 40 is a number of judgment in scripture the Israelites were 40 years in the wilderness for their disobedience and through that many didn't enter the land as they thought they would when they left Egypt He brought their children in. The floodwaters were on the earth 
40 days and nights destroyed the ancient world for their wickedness. So the church became incorporated, it became a business, and it became very rich materially. Many spiritual things went by the wayside. Mark chapter 4. Verse 3, listen. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. It came to pass, and he sowed as he sowed. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came, devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it scorched, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns. Thorns. What did Christ say about thorns? In other passages. Some fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground. It did yield fruit that sprung up and increased. And he brought forth some thirty, some sixty, some a hundred. He said to, him, said to them, He that has ears, let him hear. Verse 13, He said to them, Know you not this parable? How then will you know all parables? The sower that sows, the sower sows the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution rises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which, sown, which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things enter in. Choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. These are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirty times, some sixty, some a hundred. There are many things Herbert W. Armstrong did not understand in his time. He wouldn't see the end of every of all of this. It's almost another 40-year period now since he died. And while he lived, he did not understand things about the true calendar of God. did not understand things about Passover and the count to Pentecost. He did not understand things about end time prophecy. He was dead wrong about things. And people were tried through those things and some people hang on to Herbert W. Armstrong because he is their spiritual golden calf. He is their spiritual idol. They can't admit he's done any wrong. He's their Elijah. They truly don't understand the spirit that God gives to his body in the end. It's not about a man, one man, or two men, or anything like that. 
It's about those who will go forward with God. Christ is the head of the church. He gives to his body. And men die like beasts without understanding. This body would go through many things, this physical church. This message started to go out. Messages about the Sabbath day, about God's holy days. Started a television program, a radio program in, in 53. Way back. 70 years ago. And people all over the world would hear this. More and more people would have a choice put before them. God was calling his people out of Babylon. But again, those things didn't start out perfect by no means. There was much transgression still. But what happened to these people over the course of a generation is they forgot where they came from. It is Jehovah who calls people out of Babylon. And they became very haughty. And they looked on the rest of the world and the other Christian churches out there who claim to be Christian and they thumb their nose at them because they were the only one true church and the truth being yes those churches in the of are still in Babylon what calls itself Christian in this world the Catholicism the Protestantism the whatever the Baptists and everything else it's all part of Babylon but they didn't see how they were still in Babylon as well. They wouldn't fully come out until God's good time by the end of this generation. And what did we see here? 1953-54 began to go all over Europe, England, Australia, the Philippines, Latin America, Africa, all this message on the radio, Radio Luxembourg, all throughout Europe. More and more people coming into something. This would take time. It wouldn't be perfect right away. And 40 years later, from 1953-54, to the year, the church would fall apart. The physical organization would fall apart and it would be shattered into all kinds of pieces. Big pieces, small pieces, small little groups, bigger groups that continue on in the same transgression. They never understood why did this happen? Why? Why did? How could this be? We're the church of God. We're God's people. We're, we have the commandments. We have the Sabbath day. We have the gospel of the kingdom. How could this be? Because it wasn't perfect. And God was going to find out. 
through all of this, who is going to come? Who is going to be able to stand in the end? Who is going to be able to stand? For their haughtiness, they were brought low. And wolves in sheep's clothing continue on till this day. Other spiritual idols in the image of their predecessor. But the spiritual body is what comes through all this. Isaiah chapter 3 <laughs> verse 8 for Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against Jehovah to, pro to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance does witness against them and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe to their life, for they have rewarded evil to themselves. Revelation chapter 11, we see the witnesses in the streets of Jerusalem the spiritual body God says it spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt Revelation chapter 11 and they of the people kindreds and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. These things have not been understood in the past. Jerusalem, the spiritual body, the church, like Sodom and Egypt. But by the end of this, by the end of this, the Spirit of God comes into them. When does that happen? Daniel chapter 9. Seventy sets of seven are determined on your people and on your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem to Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again. The way to walk. And the wall, even in troublous times. But it would only come to the end. Those who endure to the end. That would be made perfect. And after three score and two weeks, 62 sets of seven shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. What did we talk about the first day of the feast? The true Passover
and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and to the end of the war desolations are determined What did Christ say about the abomination in the holy place in the last generation? We must repent and keep the truth and follow what is good. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Revelation chapter 12 see, because after this 1260 year period of the early church would come six 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 and six 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 would go up into the last generation And it would be in the last generation. And people would have to be freed by their Passover out of that. Revelation chapter 12, verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. He persecuted the church. Remember, the dragon gives power to the beast. The beast is over the whole world in the end time generation, in every nation. And it's about deception and breaking the commandments of God. And this was in and is in the physical body of Herbert W. Armstrong and all his people right up until the end. He makes war with the saints and overcomes them. He changes times and laws. When we know the truth, when you understand that this world believes things that have never been before, and the images that it's been shown, turning the things of God into a fairy tale delusion, then you can see what's happened. The things God gave for time and seasons above in the heavens. We'll talk about that. We'll get there more too. We can go on and on about that. And we will. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Revelation chapter 12, verse 13. Verse 14. And to whom were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness in her place, where she is nourished for time, times, and a half time. From the face of the serpent. So nourishment from God. But it only started out as milk. It only started out as milk. Who's going to grow up to eat solid food? And woe to those who give suck in this time. And to those with child who are still feeding them milk. Because the milk at this point has gone bad, has become sour due to false prophecy and false doctrine in this late hour. And they're still out here on the telecasts talking about Easter and trying to get people to realize things about the Sabbath and the Holy Days. But do they have the Sabbath and the Holy Days right? These people, 
Do they understand? They're continuing on in the things that they should have grown in 70, 80 years ago now. And they've made no growth. It's arrested development. Spiritually. And they haven't understood. And the time will come to an end. And they will be desolate in the end. Without repentance. The serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. Who will stand? It is by God's commandments we stand. It is by the truth that we stand or fall. Revelation chapter 11. And after three days and a half, the word here for days, time, it's written diff differently. Time, times and a half. Seventy sets of seven. After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on them which saw them. Time, times, and a half. Three times and a half. see in the book of Revelation seven churches but these are two the seven seven is complete when you read we talked about spiritual Jews the body of Christ we have to understand Revelation chapter 2. And to the angel of the church of Smyrna, chapter 2, verse 8, book of Revelation. These things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know your works, your tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be you faithful to death, and I will give you the crown of life. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. He that overcomes shall not be heard of the second death because they are in the first resurrection the first fruits the resurrection of the body of Christ and they live forevermore at the coming of Christ this 10 day period there is a 10, 10 day period from trumpets to the day of atonement talked about that a while back what does that mean for this last 10 years? We will get there. This feast. We will get to that. But understand and hold these things in your mind.
Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write these things, says, He that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens. I know your works. Behold, I've set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For you have a little strength, and have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of a synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews. Here we see this again. And are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come on all the world. I have been talking about what's coming for almost eight years now. And now we're coming to it. Who will stand? Try them that dwell on the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which you have, that no man take your crown. Him that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple, in the temple, in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. I will write on him my new name. He that has ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. These two parts of the body have good things from God. The other parts of the body are told to repent. This is the message I'm bringing you today. And at this whole feast. And for the last eight years... Repent and follow God and keep his commandments. Because this word is fire. Whether you understand it or not. The daughters of Zion are haughty though. Isaiah chapter 3. Verse 10, say you to the righteous that it shall be well with him. The Psalms, so all thine commandments are righteousness. It's by Jehovah's righteousness that we conquer and make war with the beast and conquer the beast by the truth, by the commandments of God, by his Holy Spirit. It shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe to the wicked! It shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given to him. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Again, these people 70, 80 years old, teaching people still, trying to call people out of the world, trying to do a work. And they're like children still. They've never grown in, in, in the truth. They've never understood. It wasn't time yet for Herbert W. Armstrong in the very beginning to understand yet. It would take a whole generation and the physical things would be brought low and all the idols of, of Egypt will be brought low. And they had a very funny way of understanding things and they didn't understand that Judah in the end is us. 
we are God's spiritual Jews who keep his commandments and have his testimonies. But they looked at everything very physical. They looked at Judaism and said we should follow Judaism. Listen carefully to me. I love all people of this world, no matter where they come from, no matter what background. But Judaism is a false religion. It is not what God gave to Israel. It is the traditions of the rabbis and elders that gone on for thousands of years. Judaism doesn't have what the body of Christ had. The religion of Judaism is Antichrist. They don't believe that Christ, Yeshua, was the Passover. They don't understand any of that. They've gone even worse into idolatry after that time when Christ first came. Judaism is a religion that started after Christ when the, when the rabbis denied him. They went in and followed all kinds of mysticism and today they follow the Kabbalah, which is the religion of the beast. And it's on the flag of Israel. And again, I have nothing but love for all people. I'm talking about the religion. It is what religion it is false religion that destroys people. I came out of Roman Catholicism. God brought me out of that as a young man growing up. He gave me the truth. He brought me to his word. The religion of Catholicism along with all Protestantism and every other Sunday keeping pagan church is false. Judaism is no different. Judaism is a false religion. So Herbert W. Armstrong didn't understand prophecies that I've talked about the last few days here, in the last eight years, really. He didn't understand where spiritual Jews and the things that God has for his people in the end, wine and milk, true prophecy, that would come at the very end in understanding all these things and doctrine, milk, the milk of the word the true timing of the Sabbath and the holy days and everything else all of God's Sabbaths it's for his people he didn't start out knowing all that he, he was very confused about a lot of things and then he started a college and he created little minions in his image that are still to this day very confused about a lot of things. And they've all become spiritual idols. Wolves in sheep's clothing, whether they know it or not. They're stealing from people in the name of God. And they're lying to people in the name of God. And the curse in Zechariah is on them and their houses will be destroyed. They're the blind idol shepherds that have eaten up the flock blind in the right eye when you see this you have to pluck that out and understand the truth if your right eye is blind pluck it out you know the eyes the vision these people don't have it they don't understand and they don't understand where they are at in time now. What's come on them? They're completely oblivious to it. The end, the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Just like the days of Noah, it's Christ said. In those days they were eating and drinking and marrying. And did not know until the flood came and it took them all away. So shall it be. So it is. So it is. These haughty churches, they will not stop. God is going to put a stop to it. Children are their oppressors and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead you cause you to err and destroy the way of your paths. Make straight the way of the Lord. That is what we are doing here. 
Jehovah stands up to plead and stands to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of the people and the princes thereof, for you have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean you that you beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, says Jehovah God, the God of hosts? Moreover, Jehovah said, because the daughters of Zion are, are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet, they keep calling out to people still trying to do a work still trying to do a work but they don't realize their work it's a work of nothing their work is nothing in the end they're stealing from people to make a work a work of what it's a work of idolatry they're not keeping the commandments of God and they're not part of his spiritual body yet Jehovah will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and he will discover their secret parts. Revelation chapter 16, again, remember the plagues that God's people put on those who will not repent. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your way, Revelation chapter 16, verse 1, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God on the earth. The first went and poured out his vial on the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore on the men which had the mark of the beast and on them which worshipped his image. We've gone over that in the past. Now these leaders, the festering sore of a spiritual nature, they cannot repent any longer. They're too far gone. They won't repent. It's like the heart of Pharaoh. God knew the heart of Pharaoh. He knew he wouldn't repent. But God lifted up Pharaoh to do something great in his people that would come later Isaiah chapter 3 the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head this has to do with the mark of the beast and those who are in the image of the beast I made videos on that to understand how these people break the commandments of God and they don't even have a clue where they know not where they stumble in that day in that day in that day this is the end time the day Jehovah brings judgment at the end of this generation the day of the Lord He will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and headbands and the tab tablets and the earrings and the rings and the nose jewels and the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles, all these things describing an adorned woman. church as the woman and the wimples and crisping pins and glasses and fine linen and hoods and veils and it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell there shall be a stink and instead of a girdle a rent and instead of well set hair baldness and instead of a stomach or a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. Your men shall fall by the sword 
and your mighty in the war. Daniel chapter 9. After three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And to the end of the war, desolations are determined. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the middle of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured on the desolate it is the wrath of God that is poured on those who do not repent but for those who do repent seven churches in the book of Revelation five are told to repent Two parts of the body Christ are alive witnessing all this take place up until the very end and in that day seven women will take hold of one man saying we will eat our bread and wear our own apparel only let us be called by your name to take away our reproach. In that day shall the branch of Jehovah be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the middle thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning and Jehovah will create on every dwelling place of Mount Zion and on her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night and on all the glory shall be a defense there shall be a shadow for a tabernacle in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge, and for a covert from the storm and from rain. Let's go to... Go to Matthew chapter 17. Chapter 7. Verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles which choke the word, he said? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Why, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone who said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven and he will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? 
and in your name cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works? Then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work lawlessness. Stop there for today.